expert on this region. In fact, he speaks Mandarin fluently. That's really tough. Have you ever just even looked at Chinese writing on a page? Uh, the former uh, U.S. ambassador to China, former presidential candidate and governor of the fine state of Utah, John Huntsman. On, hey, uh, what's going on? Governor, well, good, always good to have you. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Governor, we're looking at this and say that chickens are coming home to roost for China right now, uh, that we should be grateful for the next couple of days at least. Uh, the markets are going to be closed there. But they're doing everything but throwing in the kitchen sink to, to try to make something happen over there. What, what, do, you, what yeah. do you think of the panic that's set in? Well, listen, this, this correction, at least in the Shanghai and the Shenzhen markets, are long overdue. I mean, when you look at Shenzhen, you look at the forward valuation, their multiples, they've been about 40 times, which is double what we've seen on the S&P in recent years. So any close observer of the equity markets in China would know that a correction was due, and, and here we are. But it doesn't matter what the Chinese do, what the government does in terms of intervention. It's always going to be short term and nothing's going to help until Chinese companies become more transparent, play by the rules of the road, quit ripping off our intellectual property and basically earn more real uh, cash flow. That's the only way they're going to correct the imbalance that exists there. So what we're seeing is, I think, uh, an emergency attempt on the part of the government to take panic out of the marketplace. It may last for a few days or a week or a month, but longer term, uh, the business environment in China is going to have to improve and it's going to have to become more conducive and accepting of international market standards. You know, Governor, I always think the problem with a free market is in this case, it's a communist free market. And, and that is just not reconcilable in the end when you have... A communist government effectively saying and forcing no short selling. In other words, uh, if you're selling shares short, uh, you're, you, you could be in a heap of trouble if not being carted off to jail. And they're also <laughs> demanding brokerage houses, big banks there to buy stock. I mean, that yeah. is not a free market. It's not a free market. Some would argue that the United States is not exactly a free absolutely, market. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, we got problems on both sides. But the financial markets, uh, financial services in China, uh, and the stock market, which is a relatively new phenomenon in, in China, you're going to see a lot of corrections in the years to come. I think a lot of liberalization. I sense that Xi Jinping knows where he wants to go over the next seven years left uh, in his uh, in his term. Uh, they're going to have hard choices ahead. And here's what's happening. They've got this unprecedented anti-corruption campaign where they've taken out 100,000 senior officials. Uh, they've got the market, which has lost 30 or 40 percent of its value. And all the while, the underlying reality of the economy, Neil, is they're going from an investment-led export machine, which was the easy way to make money, now to more of a consumption model. And there's no guarantee they're going to get to the promised land, but they're somewhere in the middle of that transaction. Uh, and it's a really difficult set of circumstances. But I have to say, you know, China has never gone through this kind of tumult before because they've never been the second largest economy in the world. They are today. So when you hear when these seismic events occur in China, which will continue to happen, the whole world feels it and the markets respond. And welcome. Welcome to the new global reality. Yeah, no, no doubt about two. that. But, you know, uh, Scott Walker, in the campaign scene, the, uh, the presidential candidate was saying, you know, Chinese leaders coming here. He wouldn't meet with him. Wouldn't meet with him. What do you yeah. think of that? Well, I don't think that's a great idea. I think we should meet face to face with confidence, with determination, with resolve, and with the strategy, most importantly. We never have strategies when we sit and talk with the Chinese, typically. I mean, Reagan sat face to face with Gorbachev during the Reykjavik summit. Nobody on his team said, no, you shouldn't meet. You should sit down with strength and resolve and take it all the way to the finish line. That's the way we as Americans do business. It's the way we do business uh, uh, in, the, in the commercial realm, and it's the way we should do business in politics. But my biggest complaint is that we just have not had a real strategy in the U.S.-China relationship. We're not connecting the dots. We're not, we're, not, we're not doing what needs to be done in the South China Sea with respect to cyber intrusion and theft, uh, with respect to uh, ongoing bilateral investment uh, treaty talks. There's so much that we can do on the upside. Let's not forget that this relationship has a lot of upside potential. We continue to focus only on the downside. Well, which maybe of that's, we what, need to that's to. what the, the secret of Donald Trump's success has been, at least in the polls. He's hitting a nerve with Americans who feel that China has got the better of us and that we count out of the Chinese. And he's been saying uh, that uh, they need us a lot more than we need them. What do you make of that and, and his emergence and sustained emergence in the polls? Well, he's real uh, and his message is viable. 
Uh, and listen, the easy part of political discourse is to say what's wrong and how things are broken. The hard part is to say what you're going to do about it. Uh, so in the U.S.-China context, Neil, the hard part is to say, okay, this is broken, this is wrong, this is where we're getting screwed. Now, here's what we're going to do to improve things other than just shutting your door. That's not an answer. That's not good for business growth and for export growth, which we're going to see a lot of in the years to come in this yeah, country. Yeah, but what do you make of Donald Trump saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, Governor, that we don't need their stuff, and it means a battle back and forth. We just stop buying, to quote him, their crap. What do you uh, make of that? That that that's a throwaway line. And that listen, you can get an I know how I can get an applause line in every town hall meeting. That's easy. That's not what politics should be about today. It should be about putting forward realistic ideas about growth, about prosperity, about but they're confidence, not doing that. about America. Maybe America's the perception is not doing. Do you think but, you that know this what? does but, this but field in impress the, you? Does anyone in this field impress you? We're, Neil, we're in the we're in the primary phase of the campaign. Let's let's right. admit to that that we're we're playing to the base. You know, at some point, we've actually got to calibrate to the general election when people are actually going to be looking for real ideas and a strategy and a pathway forward that speaks to confidence and unity and bringing this country well, together. What do you make we're of the talk of then? What it, maybe because it's a crowded field, Governor, of the, the yeah. talk that Mitt Romney might 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 come back into the race. What do you think of it? Well, you you can have him on and ask him personally uh, in, in in an interview. But I would say. Could I ask got, you? Could got, I ask you what you make of that? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in the subject matter, but I would say that we've got some really good candidates in the field, and it's been said all along that this could be the richest field in terms of talent and experience we've ever had. And what I'd like to see is not a race to the bottom in terms of ideas, but a race to the top. And I have every expectation that in this election cycle, we could see a race to the top in terms of real but ideas. What if it's none of these vision. guys, Governor? What if it, it, that's what might be explaining some of the rumored talk, and it might be self. Romney inspired uh, of, of bringing someone else in or bringing the old horse in yeah. and, and seeing it. What do you make there's, of that? Listen, there's going to be talk all the way to finish line. There always is every election cycle. What if somebody else got in the race? What if we brought in the last uh, the last best performer? The fact is, you've got who you've got. They're willing to do it. It's a tough slog. It's difficult on families. And uh, we've got some pretty darn good governors. Gov I'm a governor-centric guy. We've got some good governors who have records of good accomplishments, who are capable of leading this country, I have no doubt. Now, we have to wait and see what kind of ideas they put forward and the kind of vision they strike. The country's waiting for it. I don't think we need anybody else. But what is interesting about this dynamic is we talked about the best field in recent years without Donald Trump. And now Donald Trump has entered and he's basically nullified every other candidate for the time being. Which you, think he could be, you think he could be the nominee? And if so, could you support him? He, he could be the nominee. And uh, there's a lot uh, uh, about Trump that I do like. And I'll, I'll, I'll just tick off a couple of things. I like his idea that money is a corrupting influence in politics. I think he's absolutely right on. He's, he's right on about the Washington class and uh, how they're carving up uh, a lot of the economic pie for their benefit. I think he's right on about government not getting the best and brightest. We're cutting deals that uh, aren't as good as the deals cut in the private sector. That's no surprise because the best of the best are going into private sector. They're not going into government service anymore. He wants to change that. I think that's absolutely terrific. I don't like the idea about closing down the borders and the, and the nativist talk. But there are some aspects of what Trump is saying that uh, resonate with me and I think resonate with a whole lot of other people. And I could see a pathway for him. I'll, you know, listen, if he wins the first three or four primaries, I think he's got a clear shot at it. Wow. Governor, always good seeing you. My best to your family. Thank you very much. And to you.